Welcome aboard to another traveling adventure with Tim and Christine. Here we are at Fort Warden State Park. Fort Warden State Park is a 434 acre multi use park with more than two miles of saltwater shoreline and a wide variety of services and facilities. The park rests on a high bluff overlooking Puget Sound. This historic fort offers many amenities, including full service dining, a canteen along the beach, a coast artillery museum, the Port Townsend Marine Science Center and Natural History Museum. You may find drama performances, concerts, or workshops year round here. There are 11 miles of hiking trails and kayak and bike rentals during the summer and full and partial hookup campsites, which we are about ready to check into. Things here are seasonal, so be sure you check before you arrive whether things are open or not. Camping and RV check-in 15 minute parking right here. Since we're here in December, they have the individual campsite water supply turned off. So Tim is filling up the fresh water prior to going to our campsite. Any wise words you have for the people watching the video? The water's wet <laughs> and kind of cold. Yeah, okay. Hey, welcome to another traveling adventure with Tim and Christine. Tim, Christine. I think they got that. Yes, and we're here at Fort Warden, <laughs> Fort Warden State Park actually, which is a beautiful Washington State Park situated right on the water here just outside of uh, the town of Port Townsend, which is sort of on the northeast tip of uh, the Olympic Peninsula here in Washington State. It's a very large park. It has two miles of saltwater shoreline, many, many miles of hiking trails up here through the woods so on the bluffs over the water. Uh, a lot of old batteries and bunkers here that obviously used during the wartime eras there, World War I, World War II. Yeah, we're going to show you some of those hiking trails where we like to hike all around here. Yeah, we hope you like it. Stay with us. Have some fun with us. This is the Marine Science Center Aquarium. And... Rainier to the south, and Baker to the north. Rainier to the south and Baker to the north. We usually don't get here in time to see this aquarium. Because in the winter it's just open on weekends. So I better quit doing photography and try to make it in here because it's after 3 o'clock. I don't know how late they stay open. Say hi to an Irish Lord, which is a member of the Sculpin family. And he's not moving around too much. Just kind of hanging out in this aquarium. This is a cabazon over here. Okay. I can't pronounce whatever that name was. Cabazon. C-A-B-E-Z-O-M. Oh, look at that. Kind of related to a lingcock. Wow. They're just really still. There he goes. So these are native in these waters, huh? Yep. I'm, I am not familiar with these guys. They're only in a grunt sculpin. I always just knew them as grunt fish. Wow. 
Look at these guys. Aren't they interesting? They're little. They uh, scour the bottom, is that it? Yeah, they're just bottom feeders. Oh, there's... See the one in this little hole here? Yeah, they hide inside things, don't they? the aquarium here just enjoying the beautiful scenery there's a sea cucumber right made from garbage yep. they took a bunch of garbage they found on the beach and turned it into there's an artistic fish. display there's a fish swimming around there but, uh, when we paid to get into the aquarium, they gave us the, this cork, which will get us into the museum here. You pay for one and you get to go into the museum and the aquarium. That's the aquarium over there. And we walked right out here. We're going to go into the museum. seen our exhibit before? No, no I mean, we yeah. haven't. A few other times we've been up here camping, it's always been off season or closed. So oh, here you are. Yeah, we have been. What do you think that thing is? Well, uh, must be an orca, right? Everybody right? be told you. Yeah. <laughs> you your so story. it is not a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, <laughs> right. No, it's actually a skeleton of a female transient or big orca. The Port Townsend Marine Science Center received permission from NOAA to dig up the bones and finish cleaning them. In January of 2011, Master Mammal Bone Articulator Lee Post joined a large group of Port Townsend Marine Science Center volunteers to lead the restoration and reassembling of CA-189 skeleton. During this fascinating project, many school groups came to learn about orcas and the story of CA-189. <laughs> the students decided oh, wow. to name her Hope because she embodies hope Isn't for the health cool? of orcas and the future of our oceans. <laughs> so this is from the mouth of a baleen whale. Okay. How it filters its food and it says do not touch it. That makes me want to touch it so much. Wow. Have you been downtown? Um, uh, this baleen here is uh, one of the plates of baleen that came from the skeleton of that great whale then on Union Wharf. Oh, okay. There's a skeleton there. of a baleen down on Union Wharf. Okay. And this came from that?
Well, we're standing here in front of the Point Wilson Lighthouse, which uh, I think the original structure was uh, completed and activated in 1879, December of 1879. And uh, originally the light itself was on top of this first structure, the light keepers, light keepers cottage there. But then they moved it in 1913 to the new tower that you see in the background, just past the light keeper's house. And, um, you know, at one time there was people that manned this station and everything was sort of manual. Of course, now everything's computerized and electronic. And, um, all the system that controls shipping in and out of Puget Sound coming through the Straits of Juan de Fuca and down into Puget Sound is managed out of an office in uh, Seattle, which is south of us. And it's all part of uh, what they call the VTSL, Vessel Traffic Safety Lanes. So welcome to the age of te technology. <laughs> no more light keepers stationed in their light keeper cottages. Well, we're here standing on the beach on a late November day, a beautiful morning here at uh, Point Wilson, and yeah, part of uh, Fort Worth State Park. And for salmon fishermen, you probably heard of Point Wilson because Point Wilson dart is a very popular jig style of lure for fishing salmon. And I believe they were probably invented right here at Point Wilson in this area. But it does seem kind of weird for me to look out big expanse of water because I grew up on Puget Sound and it used to be salmon fishing was open year round you could look out any time of the year and see boats all over the place. It seems so weird now that salmon fishing is shut down. Seasons are very restricted nowadays. We're looking at all this and we just saw the Washington State Ferry run across and that's the only boat I've seen on the water. So sign of the times I guess. People want to go fishing but we can't go fishing. This is a map of Fort Warden State Park and we are camping right about here. Yesterday we walked down to the Marine Science Center right here and that was really a wonderful experience and right across the way here is the museum. We have trails that walk all around these batteries that we're going to be taking today. This is the trail that takes us up above to the parade grounds and the commons area where the cafe is. I'm trying to keep up with Tim. It's a pretty cool trail. It does get a little steep. of the trail leads to a grouping of these huts that look like they're made out of canvas. Maybe it's vinyl backed. I suppose during the summer they are residents. Whether they're rentals or for uh, group groups that come here for classes, I don't know. So we just came across the building that we believe the cafe is in, the Reveille Cafe. Oops, uh, must be also seasonal, it looks like it's closed. 
Uh, this looks out into the rest of the commons area. Some of the beautiful old buildings from the former Fort Warden that is now used as Peninsula College. Okay, this is the Coast Artillery Museum. Uh, unfortunately, it's closed today. We can't go in, but we have visited here before. And it was pretty interesting. A lot of old uh, war memorabilia. If I can even say that word, memorabilia. <laughs> and um, Saying it fine. And out in front here is the parade grounds. Yeah, where, look at that. Yeah. One thing that they talk about in this Coast Artillery Museum is the fact that a movie was made here on these grounds all over this park and in Port Townsend. Yeah, a movie An officer it. and a gentleman. Yep. For some reason I was thinking it was Tom Cruise that starred in that movie, but we looked it up and it was Richard Gere. Yeah. So if you're ever on Jeopardy and that question comes up, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Seems like whenever we walk here, there's someone in the water during the winter. Yeah. Uh, what temperature do you think that water is? Uh, 49 degrees on the lower part of 49 degrees. So to me, it seems unusual to want to be in the water when the water's that cold. What draws you to do that? Uh, to try to gain better control of my central nervous system. Okay. Cold plunging has a whole bunch of amazing benefits. And one of them, it helps with regulating emotions, helps with pain management, it helps with increasing your brown fat, which is a healthier version of fat that uh, allows you to fuel with and stay warm with. Um, it just helps you learn to adapt to handling everyday stressors Okay. Because if you can knowingly get into an uncomfortable situation and experience discomfort intentionally, then when real discomfort hits, you uh, learn to be able to breathe through it and stay relaxed. Right. So I think my husband's probably thinking I should get in because I always <laughs> complain about the cold weather. <laughs> it does help build uh, resilience to colder weather. It still is cold, but your body learns to adapt to where it can regulate its body temperature better when exposed to both cold and heat. So how long do you stay in? Um, well, I generally stay in around 20 minutes to 30 minutes, but it's really only recommended to be in like two or three minutes. That's what I thought. Because it can be, I mean, negative on you, like you could get too cold, right? Yeah, it can induce hypothermia. I've been doing it for a while, so I kind of have an idea of what I feel like my body's limits are. And uh, after this, when I get out, I will have a surge of energy and I'll go on a hike and I'll be able to rebuild the body temperature back up. Wonderful. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know we should have checked the tree. Is it going to hold you? You don't want to end up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite the swimmer. There's Christine just hanging around. Yeah, but I'm not going in. Yeah, <laughs> We're going up these stairs, Tim. Oh my gosh. We can do it all the way up there from the beach. Up. <laughs> Go ahead. Lead the way. You're a climber, Tim. 
This guy was a mountain climber. <laughs> Look at him go! I'm right behind you. Here she comes, climbing the mountain. Yeah, all the way up, part way. That's good. Um, Marrowstone Island across there, and there's Fort Flagler, which uh, we've stayed at several times. And actually, Fort Flagler was one of the three forts. Fort Flagler, Fort Warden here, where we're at, and Fort Casey over there created the what was termed the Triangle of Fire to protect Puget Sound yeah. from the enemy. And now we're back up here in the main body of Fort Warden. These uh, homes over here were officers' quarters, and then there's the parade ground out there in the center, and on the opposite side is where the enlisted men stayed. Officers' quarters open hours. So I guess it is June to August. Tents and barracks were fine for enlisted men. However, officers, officers required more adequate quarters in keeping with their greater military status. Fort Warden was considered a prestigious command post and only the best of the best officers were posted here. This row of nine stately buildings, each completed in 1904, merely hints at the lifestyles of officers and their families. walked up the trail from our campground up here and now we are Tim's gonna tell us where we're at here well we're at uh, Battery Tolls or Tolles I don't know T-O-L-L-E-S and uh, this is just one of the a fair number of uh, batteries which are gun emplacements here so they had cannon installed in these uh, batteries and they could fire out onto the water from here and protect uh, Washington State and Lower Puget Sound in particular. 1896, the U.S. Congress approved construction of new military installations to guard the entrance to Puget Sound. Soon after, work began on Fort Flagler, Fort Warden, and Fort Casey. The more than 100 stationary cannon at these three forts would create an overlapping field of fire through which no enemy ship could pass unscathed. And acquired from the federal government in the 1950s, the three forts are now owned and managed by the Washington State Parks and Recreation Commission. No longer centers of military activity, they offer commanding views of Admiralty Inlet and unparalleled opportunities for recreation and relaxation. It's another cold plunger. For the season, but this is the Cable House Canteen. You can see they have burgers, tacos, ice cream. I think we'll have to come back here in the summer and have some fun. After a short drive from the park, we find ourselves in downtown Port Townsend. Port Townsend was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1977. Buildings from nearly every period of Port Townsend history have survived to the present day. We're walking out on the wharf here and look in the distance. We can see it's the gray baleen whale whose fibrous mouth parts were on display at the museum back in the park. Wow, we heard about this and here it is. Beautiful. Port Townsend has a large marina and is a maritime center for independent boat builders and related industries. The port is home to classic wooden boats and receives visits from others seeking quality repairs. In 
In addition to its natural scenery at the northeast tip of the Olympic Peninsula, the city is known for its many Victorian buildings remaining from its late 19th century heyday. This is the Rose Theater. Tempting to go in and watch a movie there, but we decided to have lunch here at the Silver Water Cafe and had Chapino. Delicious! Excellent! Just really nice. And this, actually, the entrance to the Silverwater Cafe and the entrance to the Rose Theater. Looks like right here. Let me join him. It smells interesting down yeah, here. Well, first it smelled like cigarette smoke to me, and then mm. it smelled like incense. Okay. Oh, looks like they're just developing storefronts down here, and nothing's quite, most of the spaces aren't open yet. Nice. State Park. <laughs> right? That's where we're at. <laughs> You're going to say Tim and Christine. At oh. 